Hi, welcome back to the Gapster channel. My name is Gabby. This is going to be one of my most exciting videos, at least for me, because I've been waiting for this for quite a long time. This is about my own Gapster TD1 DAC. <laughs> The Gapster TD-1 is based on the vintage Philips TDA-1541A chip. Yes, a lot of brilliant people have worked on this chip before, but technology has changed. Now we have access to some amazing technologies like the streamer from in Canada, because you really need a great streamer for that, because we are going to have access to the direct I2S signal. We also have access to some amazing uh, power supplies like the ultra capacitors. And I also discovered that the OPA 861 is a great op amp that works really well together with that combination. Altogether made some amazing sound. And the more I start working with it, the more I discovered how great it is. And I start tinkering and adjusting and fine tuning. And I finally designed something that I like. You can run the TD1 basically just on the DAC itself on a single uh, standalone DAC and uh, for that you just uh, connect it to uh, one of Ian Canada streamers or any I2S signal or clean I2S signal shall I say that you can access to. We're not talking about I2S where you actually put an HDMI cable here, we're talking about direct connection to the internal I2S that's coming off the chip. and. Uh, by doing so, you're going to be able to get some really great sound. The TD1 DAC uses two separate OPA 861 chips, one for each channel, so you have the left and the right channel, and they're quite divided. So that actually contributes some amazing separation and some amazing uh, imaging, and we'll talk about that later as well. You can also add some shields, and uh, those shields let you basically stack the DAC on top of the actual streamer. Another step is you can add one of uh, a PCM board, like uh, one of Ian Canada's, for example, PCM board or other PCM boards, where you can actually split the I2S signal. And that's going to let you basically run the uh, DAC in a special mode, where you're going to have even a slightly improved sound. And lastly, you can also stack two of those DACs and have basically a, um, a differential mode where basically you're running them on an XLR output. So now you're running everything in differential mode. And this is a true balanced mode is what commonly is known as. So each DAC, each board is running a separate channel. So you've got one board running the left channel and one board running the right channel. And this is probably going to be the ultimate separation. Also, if you don't want to stack things like a major high rise, uh, you can easily put them uh, side by side or even just two of them on top of each other. On, as long as they're beside the, uh, the streamer, like within probably six inches, you should be okay. Just keep your, uh, your leads for your I2S uh, uh, leads really as short as possible. So how does it sound? Everybody's probably wondering, okay, how does it sound, Gabby? Well, I've been comparing different DACs all the time because I'm trying to do this and that. And every time I try to listen to the Gapster TD1 and compare it to the other, I just cannot help myself but not see quite a difference in sound. Uh, usually I don't see a big difference, but I do see it here. It's one of the sounds that's hard not to unhear, if you can say that word. Because once you hear it, it's like you can't, you want to keep listening to it. And I find myself, here I am testing things and I listen to the TD1 and I just can't help myself but wanting to listen more. It's more enjoyable to listen. Uh, the biggest, biggest uh, difference, a striking difference, is the sound stage. It's, uh, it's a massive sound stage. It's way wider and deeper. And that alone puts this DAC on top of my list because I'm a big uh, fan of soundstage and for me that's a big ticket. The other thing is there's some slight improvements into, in the high frequencies. 
uh, which is, uh, you can see it's a little cleaner. And the base is nice and tight and, uh, and it's not boomy or anything. Uh, there is a bad reputation that this chip has a boomy base. Only if you really have it, uh, not a good uh, I2S signal, not a great power supply, not a great output stage. But once you fine tune these, the base is just perfect. And it's actually, if anything, it's a tiny bit better. So all along, it's a DAG that keeps you wanting to listen more. It's very musical, that's another thing. I'm not going to say the word analog sounding, but it is musical. But you got my idea. It's one of those DACs that you don't mind listening to and you won't get tired listening to. I happen to have a couple of friends visiting and they're not like a true audiophile, but they have great sense of uh, music. Uh, one of them, uh, Henrik, is actually a wildlife photographer, uh, probably one of the best in the world. I, I put a link of his actually YouTube channel in the description below. So I, I played two uh, songs for them, once on the uh, Denafrips Terminator and once on my Gapster TD1. Uh, I did not say what's playing, uh, which, inst which uh, DAC is playing. I did not even tell them that I'm building a DAC or anything like that. I just say these are a couple songs on system A and system B and tell me which one you like and why. And this is what they said. It's very interesting. Okay, so which one did you like? The first one or the second one? For me, the second one. And for you? Second one, for sure. So what did you find about the second one that you like? Uh, the second one, I, I found the tonal range was much wider, deeper. Um, it was just a much more pleasurable experience, if you will. Okay. And what about for you? Yeah, I need to ask uh, one question. How do you say envolver? Like involving? Like in involve? Yeah, yeah, the sound involved. was, yeah, okay, what you mean? Yeah. yeah, like you could feel this sound involving you, like surrounding oh, yeah, surra oh, yeah, surrounding, surrounding, so, yeah, okay. surrounding you, so because you could feel the sound surrounding you, yeah. like, you know, deeper mm -hmm. way, yeah. yeah, okay, I agree with that. I spent a lot of time fine-tuning the output stage on this DAC and also the design of the DAC. This is a four-layer board. This is not a two-layer board. It's almost like a, a surface mount, but it's actually I made it through hole for all of you guys that are not highly experienced. And I'm kind of, I used to be one of them. And I know the struggle of trying to solder those pesky little tiny capacitors that barely measure one millimeter and uh, so it's it's a lot easier to solder so almost most people can solder it there's a couple uh, like the uh, chips the op 861 chips and a couple things that are surface mount but they're most 95 percent of the DAC is through hole but through hole in a tight version in a four layer design so it kept all the characteristic of a surface mount yet it is through hole and you can use some very high quality parts most of the parts are used well, actually all the parts used are from mauser they're very high quality parts and that's another thing it's one thing to uh, design something and then not using good parts because parts could make or break any system we all know that you can solder your power supply leads directly to the board to the gold-plated pads. There are some very large ones. You can accommodate uh, up to 10 gauge wire. So that's going to keep your impedance low. Also, I did provide some uh, pin headers in case you're testing at the beginning and you want a quick way to connect and disconnect from the board. And if you want to run separate supplies to the digital side and the analog side, it's simple. Just remove some of the jumpers and you have more pads directly connect uh, power supply to the analog side independently from the digital side. So I, I find you the, uh, the spent a lot of time on the output stage, changing every resistor, every little capacitor, and trying to see what would sound the best I measured. Although I don't have the state-of-the-art measuring equipment, I do have some basic stuff enough to get me through. And mostly it's my ears, because at the end you want it to sound good. 
and uh, spending a lot of time, I've been working on this for over six months now, uh, being quiet about it, because I really wasn't sure at the end, and I hesitate if I really should actually release something like this to the public. One thing is I really don't want this to be copied and having sold on AliExpress on and eBay and mass marketed. So I won't be releasing any schematics, although it's pretty simple design, but I've spent a lot of time, a lot of money and a lot of time spent on, on this tag to get to where it is now. I'm not trying to really, I, basically I'm not hesitating whether should I put it on the market, but I will and I'll see if everybody's kind and things are doing well, I'll keep it there. Otherwise I will easily scrap this project. But I would like other people to share what I know, what I've uh, achieved. And uh, it is a DIY and it's a hobby. And my biggest joy is when other people uh, find that it's helping them uh, further their journey into the DIY and, and hearing some of the sound that I am hearing. The release will be a bit slow at the beginning. I don't know what most of you, if anybody is interested or thousands of people interested, so I don't know. So I'll see what the demand is like and I'll basically uh, start uh, making more uh, as things go. So don't expect things to ship right away. Uh, I do have a couple limited boards uh, on, uh, on supply, but I don't have tons. And um, also, I strongly suggest you get your own parts. Yes, I can get you the parts from Mauser, but if you are in, in a place where you can access uh, Mauser or even DigiKey, uh, please order your own parts. It'll be way cheaper and less expensive because often they'll give you free shipping than me trying to ship all this stuff for you and spending all the time sorting things out. So, But I will do it if someone is in some place that I cannot get access to uh, to Mauser and li like me uh, to get all the parts in one in one go. Uh, also, I did create a, a new uh, website. Yes, I did. It's uh, Gapster.ca, and it's still in its uh, infancy, but it's starting slowly. I will be adding more and more. But you can go on my website and actually order either the boards or the boards with a kit or even assembled. Talking about assembled, I really do not want to be soldering too many of those. I really don't have the time. Uh, so basically, I, I wasn't going to put that option, but it is there and it's extremely expensive. Only if you're desperate and you really uh, can afford it. Otherwise, try to find a friend, find a buddy, find a technician that will put it together for you. It'll be probably a lot cheaper and easier. But if someone really wants it, I will do it. I'll do a few and see what happens. All this is going to be on an experimental basis, see how the flow goes. I'm not here trying to, you know, make a business out of it. All I'm trying to do is just enjoy this hobby. So uh, as long as it stays enjoyable, I'll keep doing it. There will be about two to 10 weeks wait. Uh, depends on uh, supply and demand on what's going on. And uh, also summertime, I'm quite busy. I'm really trying to enjoy uh, family and go out a little bit. So uh, I don't have a lot of time to spend on, on this, but uh, I will try my best. So just bear with me and I'll slowly, slowly uh, get to things. Uh, Please don't send emails asking me tons of questions. I get hundreds of emails all the time and I'll, I'll try to answer a few here and there, but if I don't answer you, please, I'm not trying to ignore anyone. It's just, it's just me and I cannot handle too many things. I get always questions, my system having this problem, my system is wrong. I, I sympathize with everybody because I've been there. I'll try, I usually try sometimes to help, but again, I can't, do, I can't solve everybody's problems. So please bear with me and uh, please understand. I will make some videos on how to assemble the Gapster TD1. And uh, this is gonna be basically your manual. Over time, if I have, if get some more time, I'll try to put some things in the uh, text and uh, in writing. Uh, but for the time being, uh, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for me 
I'm a more of a visual person to, to people just watch the videos and if you are building it just watch the long video there'll be some long one about one step at a time how to build it how to solder every almost every part on this DAC. I want you also to understand that uh, I am as, as you're watching this is I'm biased I'm the one creating this so Please take what I'm telling you as a grain of salt, but I truly believe of what I said. I wouldn't be telling you this if I didn't believe of what I said. But again, it's like everything else. You might want to basically try. Please don't go big. Start with something small, like single board. Don't be building, you know, uh, t t uh, differential mode with major power supplies, this and that. And, and make it a huge project. Start small and if you like it then go big because I really I want you to hear it for yourself and you should be able to convince yourself and believe that yes this is a sound that you like and yes you do see what I'm seeing. Many people have worked on this DAC chip there's like thousands of people and some really brilliant people. Some people know so much, they're engineers, they know every little detail. I'm not one of them. I know a little bit, but I'm not to that level. So if you find this DAC is not really what you're aspiring for, please, you don't have to build it. Don't do it. Just don't trash it. You don't have to... Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things you either like it or if you don't like it, just uh, move and build your own. So what you need to run this DAC, you're going to need a streamer. I highly recommend Ian Canada streamer uh, with some good clocks. And even if you don't, you don't have to go and splurge on the big expensive clocks. Start with the one that comes with it. So uh, there is videos on how to build a streamer on my channel. There's quite a few of them. And also you're going to need uh, some power supplies. Uh, I suggest a plus and minus 5 volt and a 15 volt. Uh, you can get those the easiest way. You can get a couple of uh, basically i-fi power supplies. You just plug them in and you're good to go. You get two to make plus 5 and minus 5 and you can get one for the 15 volts. And uh, that could get you going. A uh, step above from that, you can use some of in Canada's uh, linear pie, or even better, you can use some of the UC Pure. And there's videos about all these power supplies on my site. I prefer to use the ultra capacitors with UC Pure, but if you're not still at that level, please don't start there. Start simple, as I said. And you're also going to need a 15 volt power supply. You can run it this way, just have those power supplies to run the entire board. And for those of you who are really advanced, start with that first. But down the road, you can actually, if you want to split the power, have separate power to the output stage than the uh, DAC chip, you can also do that. The board lets you do that, just a matter of uh, changing a jumper pin here and there. There's also a special uh, adjustment to adjust the DC offset compensation and you can adjust it to zero it to zero and this way you don't have to use any capacitors. But if you prefer not to use that, the option is there, you can not use that and use capacitors. It is up to you. It's so highly configurable. Uh, it's also, you can uh, if you don't want to use the OPA 861 output stage, you don't have to. You can use the output from the board itself and do your own output stage. So you want to use, for example, maybe a tube op amp or something like that. But I highly recommend you try it the way I've designed it because it sounds amazing. I'll be making other videos about this, uh, my Gapser TD1 DAC. You will be hearing quite a bit about it. Uh, it's going to be slow over summer, like I said, we're all busy, but as uh, the more uh, time and the more fall uh, chip in, I'm going to have more time to spend on it and make some more videos about it. I'm going to put a link in the corner here about how to build one of Ian Canada's streamer, because you're going to need one of those if you're going to use this DAC. And in this corner, I'm going to put a video about some power supplies, because you're also going to need some of those if you want to run this DAC. There'll be a speaker in the middle. If you could please help by subscribing and helping the channel, you can also help by donating some super bucks or, some, or joining my Patreon channel. I'll put some links of those in the description below. Take care and I hope to see you again.